Today we are in Porto, one of the hilliest places ever, and we came here to visit Fresh Plastic Portugal, a project here in Portugal making over 100 machines and educating thousands of people. Good morning, guys. Hey. Hola. Hola. Bon dia. Hey. Okay, so here we are today at Opolab in uh, Porto, Portugal. Today we're going to learn more about Precious Plastic Portugal, which is part of Opolab. We're going to get a little tour of the space, learn more about all the machines and projects that do here, part of Precious Plastic. Yeah, I can't wait to show you all the beautiful things that I've seen around here. Hello, I'm Irina. I'm part of Precious Plastic Portugal. And today we show you a little bit about our workspace, uh, the project we have been doing. So Precious Plastic Portugal kind of started like six, seven years ago. And we have a team working on machines. We have a team working on design, new objects. We're doing the molds. And we also do a lot of workshops all around the world. So basically when we sell machines, we also offer the service that uh, we travel behind. And so I had the, the pleasure already going to Africa, Mozambique, Santo Tome, Corsica, a lot of places in Portugal. Hello, uh, I'm João. I'm the owner and director of Opolab. And we start a project, Precious Plastic Portugal. And we are very glad to be part of the, this uh, incredible family. I'm going to talk and explain to you guys how we do the machine. So we try to maintain everything indoors. So we cut a lot of uh, materials with uh, the CNC, we use the, the laser cut, we do a lot of uh, the electronic box, we order also the resistance, the eating elements. We actually ask the, the, the company to, to make it in a, in a certain way. For us, it's very important that we maintain everything indoor so we can guarantee that the quality and the, also the results, they are perfect and the machines can work for long time. Here uh, we can uh, actually build all kind of uh, machines like version 3 and version 4. So the, the shredder, the injection, the compressor, the sheet press, all the machines in the, for precious plastic and even we have it there, the, the biopress and also customize the machines as uh, always uh, because it's like a passion to redesign the machine but maintain the, the look from the, the beginning so like, like Dave. Uh, develop. These are the, the machines we are assembled and they are almost ready. They are going uh, straight to Egypt. These are some of the, the hacks we did into the original design. The eating elements, we replace it because it's more close to the metal. It actually heat the, the tube more easy and it's uh, constant. It's a good cost at the end. Very easy to assemble. Instead of installing two resistance, you need just one because the, you can go higher and reduce uh, as you wish. About the extrusion, there's the resistance and also we improve this element here that holds the barrel. We also did in the plasma cutter here. As you can see, everything is connected and uh, actually it was uh, improved. It is very fast to assemble, thanks to Tom <laughs> that he's developed this. For the compression machine, so basically you have the oven on top. That's, we didn't change anything. But here on the, on the structure, we do some, also some adjustments. As you can see, like the moving part is hanging from on the top. And here you can actually take out this, this tray and then you can adjust the height so then you can use bigger molds and then you can uh, take uh, advantage of the height of the oven. About the electronic boxes for all the machines, we do it out of um, acrylic, this kind of solution. It's easy to assemble and it looks very nice. So these are the, the parts we, we, we do for the, for the machines, like the, the finishing, uh, for example, I can explain you this for example is for the injection so it doesn't have like the open tube so you have like a good finishing this for example is for the the shredder where you can hang the the metal parts that goes uh, that holds the seat this is are the the finishing parts for all the machines that we did in a 3d print and we use pla it's a recycled plastic and it gives the good finishing and all the necessary parts that uh, needs for so you don't have like a uh, hand loose in the, in the machines. So I will do a quick tour in Opalab, which is a huge space, so we just run through. Here we have a meeting room, behind we have the co-working area, 
and uh, where people can just uh, rent a space and work together with us here in Opola. Here we have more this um, construction area where we mount the machines, where we do different also projects, working with wood materials, metal materials, uh, foam, 3D printing, whatever you can imagine. So here's like the final step of the machines getting uh, assembled and finished to be ready to, to be shipped. So this is one uh, version 3 set and then you have a, a Pro uh, Extrusion. Behind here you see the CNC, which is really handy because you can just, you know, big uh, sheets from plastic, you put it there, you make furniture out of it, um, public uh, furniture, benches, whatever. Here you have the machine sets, we keep working since many years and do like little production series. If somebody's interested and wants us to make a special product for them uh, with precious plastic, we produce here with injection, compression, extrusion, also with the sheet press. Basically, we are quite focused in small scale products. So we work together with companies, um, schools, restaurants, NGOs. For example, they have their own waste. We analyze what kind of waste they have so we can try to help them reduce their own waste and build something out of it. Here we have the laser cutter. Sometimes it's handy for like labeling the machine, doing some signage on the machines. We use the laser cutter as well. That's the most important space basically, which uh, metal works where everything gets mounted together and assembled. Here we have Hugo, who is like... Hey, bro. Hi. So this is the metal working shop. We try to do everything in-house. We have two lathes and a mill, a saw, a plasma cutter, a bender. The fact that we do everything in-house allows us to keep control of the quality and allows us to make a lot of small changes. If we make a batch of machines and we see something that could be improved, we immediately can change that. We, we have all the drawings and we make everything here. So that uh, helps us a lot. We send them all over the, the planet. We've sent them to Africa, we've sent them to Europe, we've sent them to the islands in the middle of the Pacific and uh, the Atlantic. I just build them. We've been making like, I don't know, 20 a year for five or six years. Okay. Uh, it's 100 plus machines, absolutely. Wow, you like it? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Cool, thank you very much. You're welcome. So now we come to the 3D printing area. So we use the 3D printing for some details on the machines. But on the other hand, we also use it on the design process. So if we design a new object for a client, we always double check if uh, the client likes it. So we do the 3D printing object, because sometimes it's easier to imagine if it's not just on the screen, you see like a flat drawing, but if you actually can touch it and feel it, it's much more easier. And after this, if the object is uh, like finished and details all um, concluded, then we go ahead and make the molds and produce it in precious plastic. This is the wood workshop, but they not just work with wood, we also work with different materials here. And so on the CNC, you can cut the plastic boards, but we also do the molds in-house. We can do any mold for injection, for compression, for extrusion, either on the CNC mill or on the lathe. So depending on what final object we need, we can adapt. Okay, so Irina was super kind to set up this super beautiful and colorful table from recycled plastic. And this showcases all the nice experimental projects that are done here in Opolab and Precious Plastic uh, Portugal. So now she's going to give us a little run through all the uh, inspiring projects that they've done throughout the years. Okay, here you can see some tabletops we did for a restaurant in Lisbon. These are some boards, which is like the biggest size you can do in the compression oven. Here's some tests with different materials. So actually, it's like plastic bags. We have boards trying out the work with Fishernet. Here's some development about the extrusion machine. So we had this finishing, but now we can do like really shiny, well-finished uh, beams. Here you have a section about uh, injection. So these are molds we have been done here in Opolab. Objects from hangers to shovels to like recycling signs. The most complex one was actually, I think, this shovel because of the way how we injected it and the mold. But the final result is perfect, so it was worth all this hassle we had about it. This is a project uh, about kids' toy recycling. And we uh, made a collaboration with a company um, to recycle the dolls and rubber elements, injected it into rain boots for kids. Then we have some tryouts with the bricks from the Pro Extrusion. So here you have some examples about mounting the, the boards in different shapes. A lamp. And of course, 2023 being 2023, we've got to talk about the sheet press because of course, also precious plastic. Portugal has been experimenting with the sheet press. This was our very, very first sheet press example. Then we tried out with different materials. So this is HDPE, this is PP. We made these uh, nice tabletops uh, out of it. 
So we make the sheet and then we put it on a CNC and then we can cut it. Those are other examples from HEPE. Actually, these are kids' toys from the Replay project, also transformed into the sheet. This is um, PS, which works really fine. It gets like this really nice finish and HEPE. I really love uh, working with the sheet press because uh, you actually can produce your own material and try to implement like plastic, recycled plastic element into furniture collections. This is a new cool project for a restaurant in Lisbon. It's called Seng and they are trying to be like really super sustainable also in the way how they get their food to the restaurant. So they send us like 15 kilos of those buckets. They have those um, orange lids. And so we shred all together and then we make those boards and transform those into a furniture piece which will be in the bathroom of the restaurant for um, storing towels to after washing your hands. Behind me you can see a light installation for a festival. It will go like middle of July to Bondi the Bastion for the festival Vinculum. It's like electronic music festival. All made from cycle plastic and we have video mapping doing a, like a live performance on it. All right, super incredible work. And now let's learn more about the positive impact that they are having. Okay, guys, thank you very much for all the incredible work and the tool that you gave us. And right now I'm really curious to learn more about the positive impact of your work. Starting, of course, with uh, the number of machines that you guys have built over the last few years. See, this is kind of your main focus of this last project. We have been uh, building quite a lot of machines in the last year, so I think it's about more than 150, version 3 and version 4. We sell them as a set, but also individual. Yeah, as you were saying about like, the positive impact, I think it's not just about machines, it's not just about the amount of plastic, it's uh, a lot about educational service. So we focus as well educating people, like reusing plastic and don't having so much plastic in their normal life kind of change their mindset. I'm very curious if you have some data on how many people you're you're actually educating uh, through your workshops. Workshop I was doing in a, in a school close to Lisbon. So I did a workshop with 15 teachers. Imagine 15 teachers talking to all of their school kids. You get a big number of people actually getting to know about the project, but also getting a knowledge about all the plastic and pollutions we are facing and how you can change something and uh, improve. So. Maybe it's 15 teachers, but it could be like 5,000 kids. Or actually with the, with the Replay project, which is super educational, we have been working in this five different labs. We had 45 different collection points where the kids and the parents could um, give all plastic toys. We have been working uh, like on, on with two different universities in the design courses to develop new toys, so you know, like a lot of people somehow get connected just in the last uh, last months. I'm going once a month to, to Lisbon uh, to the Mad Museum doing a workshop in the uh, in the exhibition about plastic. I've been doing a workshop for one week in Preferia. I've been to Cabo Verde, I recently have been uh, in Mozambique. Just, you know, like on a tiny spot, like probably everybody of the island already know about the project because they are able to collect plastic, they get paid for handing in the plastic waste and then they transform it uh, and make pieces out of it. Basically, it's not just about the amount of plastic you transform. It's all about like talking to people and changing their mind and, uh, and doing this in workshops and educational services and all, all over the world. I think we already reached quite a lot of people. Okay, that's uh, quite an impressive positive impact uh, connected to education and all the many hundreds of people that you are educating through precious plastic. But of course, I'm also very curious to learn more about the financials. How is this project financially sustainable? Does it make sense for people out there to start the precious plastic recycling center? So uh, I would be very curious if you can share some numbers regarding your financials. That is actually a very interesting uh, question because for us it's not like um, having like the, the more uh, result from uh, what we sell and all what we uh, uh, make as a uh, workshops. Um, for example, if you see like a couple of machines, even if it is version four or version three, you can go at the end of the year like one hundred thousand. Uh, it could be possible, of course. All the, this amount is as one purpose is to reinvest in the new machines. Everything is to uh, a lot of investment from from us. A lot, lot of uh, dedication, and uh, I can can say love love even if we create the impact in society or companies and everything you need to like uh, figure out 
a way of uh, present the, the best product and the best finishing uh, as you can. Okay, so that's it with today's video. I really hope you got inspired. I got tons of inspiration out of this and really, really hyped to learn more about the work that they do here at Precious Plastic Portugal. And I'll see you next time. Ciao!